Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, this video isn't just for Brits, but anyone that wants to know what the heck they're doing. Because according to the map men, British cities don't make sense. So we're gonna check out this video from Jay Foreman and the map men. It must be getting some spicy responses because in just three days, it has over a million views. So I'm all nighted out and I'm getting into the mood. Let's get started. All right, why don't they make any sense? How would you define a city? It's what you do on a cherry. How would you define a city? I already don't, what? Is that some kind of British joke I'm too American to know? To understand? City, an inhabited place of greater size, population, or importance than a town or village. That's better, but okay, wrong. Sure. Welcome to map, ow! No. Welcome to map men. We're no. the men, and here's the map. Map men, map men, map, map, map. In the majority of the world where it's not Britain, the definition of city is reasonably reasonable. In Japan, a city is any settlement with more than 50,000 people. Okay. In the USA, a city is anywhere with its own incorporated government. Honest, like literally I was just teaching uh, last week on basically the first day of school, we were talking about like villages and towns and then cities. And the, the first thing they said basically was what I said, which is like, you just kind of go from, I guess, like a village, a town into a city. I don't know exactly how that's going to change definitions. Where I do kind of change definition is when we get to city state. So it's like not just the city, but they also have influence over the surrounding areas. But city, okay. But Britain, as per usual, has its own special way of <laughs> doing things. Here yeah. is a map of all 76 places in the UK that are officially classed as cities. The usual ones you heard of are there, Liverpool, Manchester, Bradford, Leeds, and so on. But among them are some surprising and seemingly unworthy cities. Ely with just 20,000 people, Ripon with just 16,000 people, and St. David's with less than 1,500 people. Barely enough for a flash mob. And oppositely, <laughs> there are some very notable places- Oh gosh, what does a British flash mob look like? I bet it's so lame. Mysteriously not on this map. <laughs> Where's Reading? I love you, Brits. Or Northampton? Or Bournemouth? The most surprising omission from this list is none other than London. Britain's capital city is technically not a city. Although, confusingly, Greater London contains within it the city of Westminster and the tiny, confusingly named City of London, which okay. is not the same as London. So I heard about that, City of London. Honestly, the whole, like, differentiation of, like, City of London, London, I got from the Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I'm like, I'm in London. And then I moved to another area and I'm also in London, but it's not the city of London. I'm like, what? Okay. So the city of London is a city, but not greater London around the I five. What's it called? The, or whatever the, not the I five, the, uh, the, the, the freeway or whatever the highway that goes around it. Um, the whole area. That's what I've been told that people, when they talk about London usually refer to. So what's going on. If British cityness is clearly nothing to do with size, then what is the criteria? What makes a British city a city? I think I know this one. I think you don't. It's something to do with cheese. Let's deal with really? some common misconceptions. I like cheese. Cathedral. Contrary to popular wrongness, city status in the UK has nothing to do with having a cathedral. A cathedral there are 12 cities church. without a cathedral of any kind. And 32 non-cities with a cathedral of any kind. Yay. University. Who's the city? Another common Fire. assumption <laughs> is that you can't spell university without city. But just as with cathedrals, there are multiple examples yeah, proving don't. that this is not the case, including 17 UK cities that do not have universities. Can you name three? Hard Knox, Cooper Jones. And um, Ripon, Wakefield, and St. Asaph. Correct, and for a bonus, Nerd can you also name three non-cities that do have universities? Northampton, Reading, and Ipswich. And that's our bonus word of the day. And it's where you'll be spending an all expenses paid weekend trip to Ipswich with your mother. Brought Yay. to you by the town of Ipswich. <laughs> In an admittedly nowhere near as common as the other two, but we're going to deal with it anyway, misconception. Just because you're at mayor doesn't mean the thing you're at mayor of is a city. For two mayor. examples, Ramsey that's, that's, yes, that's the United States. The mayor, the mayor, M-A-I-R, M-A-R-E, I mean, a mayor, just like a, a, a small what, horse, a mayor, or a, a, yeah, young horse, a mayor, a mayor. Cowan is the all time. We don't know how to speak in the US either. Don't worry. Brits, I know we make fun of you and, and whatever. Americans, we don't we don't know what we're doing either. O'Neill Red Robe and Gold Chain Lord Mayor of Harrow, which is a dull suburban borough, not a city. And Oliver Coppard is the democratically elected Metro Mayor of South Yorkshire, a massive political region comprising mostly countryside, which is even more not a city. The term mayor in Britain is almost as confusing, mayor. useless, and vague as city itself. Mayor. So then what is the answer? What decides whether a place makes the official British list of cities? The surprisingly simple answer is the king. 
In a tradition going back to the 10th century, city status in Britain is granted by personal command of the sovereign and conferred by letters patent. Do you it's lame. So, I mean, you want to be called a city, right? Because it makes you sound cooler. So what do you do? Just pay them off. It's super corrupt. How corrupt? You know what that means? I do. Not. The long version is this, and the short version is every city on the official list has been put there by the monarch. It's as simple as that. On the list, city. Not on the list, not a city. So why then do so Manchester many people think it's about cathedrals? Because it used to be. It's huge by now. In the olden days, all settlements by today's standards were rather small. Sure. With Britain's population being overwhelmingly rural, cities weren't considered important if they were big, but if they were powerful. Back it's got to be in the Industrial Revolution. Right, started in Britain. And that's when you get the consolidation of all the people that are moving away because of enclosures and they can't do basically their own like free herding of animals, had to move into those cities, which then provided the uh, urbanization that the Brits really powered and the rest of the world followed. Back then, power came from the church. Big cathedrals that's such as church Wells, Ely, and small. St. Albans, which oversaw large chunks of the surrounding countryside, made the settlements they were in important settlements. And so, the then monarch awarded these places city status, which they retain to this day. But what about all those cities with city status that don't have cathedrals? When did the monarch start awarding city status to them, and why? In the 19th century, and because... The arrival Why? of the Industrial Revolution caused some towns to turn into manufacturing powerhouses and go through smoky growth spurts. By the 1850s, the little town of Birmingham was now bursting with factory workers and had outgrown the nearby cities of Lichfield and Leicester. The citizens insisted that the synod slanted system that saw sensible cities for several consecutive centuries suddenly seemed silly. Well done. And demanded that their town be given the city status it deserved. So the Prime Minister, Lord Salisbury, decided the time had come to change the cathedral rules. Oh, excellent. That's really good. No, thank you. Thank you. Top, 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 thank you. And reinvented the <laughs> meaning of city. Incidentally, that's the same Lord Salisbury who, at the same time, reinvented the meaning of the word county. In 1889, Birmingham well, size and industrial importance was officially acknowledged when it became the first place without an Anglican cathedral to gain city status. Confusingly, Birmingham's church turned into a cathedral later in 1905, but for an explanation of how that works, ask a priest. Father, what's the difference between a church and a cathedral? Uh, something to do with bishops? Birmingham was quickly followed by Cathedral <laughs> yeah, Free, Sheffield, Bradford, Hull, Nottingham, and a slow trickle of other godless heathen towns that had recently become large, joining throughout the 20th century. The list was gradually starting to make more and more sense. Until 1994, when a completely good run of sensible cities was ruined Davids. by the tiny Welsh village of St David's for no good reason. Davids. Apparently the Queen just liked it. The thing that makes this otherwise logical list illogical is these yeah, pesky small cities that ruin it for the proper big ones. So can a place lose its city status if it doesn't deserve it anymore? See, I feel like this is going to be something. If you get in trouble, you get in trouble. The king doesn't like what you're doing. You get your city status taken away. You're not going to be a, not going to be a lowly village or town. By the way, anyone know if in the United States there is a um, there is like an official recognition that you that is required to become a city. I've never heard of one. Welcome back to Stranded with Songs. Now, before the break, my guest Jimothy Twig's five song choices to be stranded on a desert island with were the Ketchup Song by Las Ketchup four times and the Ketchup Song Christmas Remix. I regret nothing. Now, as you know, as well as the five songs, you also get to take with you that one shirt. luxury Where item to the island. What luxury item will you... I will take Surfshark VPN. Literally and any on. luxury item you can think of. I will take Surfshark VPN. Why do you want to take Surfshark VPN? Because it's marvellous. Surfshark VPN allows you to virtually change your location. So your browser thinks you're in another country. And that means you can access... Con Surfshark, I will let this ad roll if you give Mapman more money. Let on an know. unlimited, can get a special deal by using the code MAP to take your wife. On a merch shirt, they're getting compensated. Money back guarantee. Take him away. Island. Well, this is more views for them, it gives more compensation. Hey, get off me! Oh, I said it! <laughs> Surfshark VPN. Literally all you need to survive. <laughs> Actually, pretty funny. <laughs> in 1998, Little Rochester and Kent, which had been a city since 1211, merged its local council with its neighbours to form the modern unitary authority of Medway. Hooray. What they didn't realise was doing this effectively removed Rochester from the official list of British cities. The new council of Medway could have retained city status simply by filling in a bit of paperwork, but they forgot, making poor Rochester the <laughs> only place in the UK ever to lose its city status. Oh, OK. I was Luckily, hoping it'd be something funnier. You do something bad and you get demoted. It's like being relegated, right? In English football, 
You suck. You lose your city status. You have to earn it back. Get back up the table. The Rochesterians didn't have to wait very long for a chance to put things right. The year 2000 was the roundest date in the calendar in living memory, even for trees. The government celebrated this milestone with a big blancmange, a bicycle wheel, and the announcement of a bidding round for city status. Three new cities were to join the list, and for the first time ever, any town with ambitions to become a city could apply to be one, hey. and size did not matter. The criteria they were looking for were yeah, notable what? features, historic features, royal features, and a forward-looking attitude. See, I just think, I think it should just be based off size, right? Do you need it to have these other things? Like, look, royal features. They just want you to kiss butt of the royals. And so lots of towns submitted bids, each having to provide a 25-page and lots of photos explaining why they were worthy. Brighton, yeah, the whole favorite cities. to win was Reading, Ooh. the largest town in England Reading. with a fast-growing tech sector. It boldly yeah. ticked all these boxes. And the winners of Millennium City Status 2000 are Inverness, Brighton and Hove, and Wolverhampton. The national bidding for city status frenzy was so much fun, the government decided to make it a semi-regular thing every city time the Queen Inverness. had a party. Newport, Newry, Preston, Stirling, and Lisbon. Lisbon? Lisbon. Oh, Lisbon. I've never heard of Lisbon. Chelmsford, Perth, and St. Asaph. Perth, Asaf. Australia? Wales ran out to big towns. Bangor, Colchester, Doncaster, Dunfermline, Milton Keynes, Wrexham, and South End. And that brings That's us to some... today's grand total of 76 That's in cities. Wales. Eight in Scotland, seven in Wales, six in Northern Ireland, show. and 55 in England. Great show, by the way. The question we need to ask, other than why did the Queen hate Reading so much, is why bother bidding? Submitting a bid is an expensive yeah, business, with tens of thousands of pounds being spent on printer ink alone. What so get? what are the advantages of being a city instead of a town? Extra government funding? Nope. Extra local powers? Nope. Extra promotion for tourism? No. Who was that? Sorry, typo. The clue is in the name, city status. That's a very good word for it because that's literally all it is. And that's why every town that bids has a different justification for why their bid was bother-worthy. Preston said gaining it's city fake. status in 2002 put them on the map, even though our research has shown that Preston was already on most maps. Perth claimed that in the decade since becoming a fake city Valor. in 2012, its economy grew 12%, which would be impressive if it weren't for nearby Dundee also growing by about 12%. Towns don't even need to win to benefit from bidding. The parish council of Marazion in Cornwall submitted a no-hoper underdog bid without their bosses in Cornwall ever knowing about it. They were quickly disqualified, but not before the subsequent like publicity resulted in a mini boost in tourism. The people who seem to get the most tangible benefit from the bidding process are the government themselves. Prime Minister. Awarding city status to an unsung town is a way to appear to show support for it and get the some positive Prime PR Minister. without having to commit any time or money. But is this okay? Is it right that the government of the day gets to mess with the dictionary definition of a geographical word? Is it perhaps time we dropped this nonsense well, of a system and replaced it with something more meaningful? Put nah. in the Constitution. The government has 8,007 more important things Rewrite to worry the about Magna than what Carta, the meaning please. of city is. Once those have been sorted, yes, we might look at redefining the definition. And even then, we probably shouldn't. Apologize After to Canada. All, a vague, archaic, Some of those were pretty funny. Slow, slow down and rewind those. Some of them were pretty funny there on the list. And ceremony and mawkish self-aggrandizing with a bit of royalty thrown in is about the most British thing imaginable. It would never happen <laughs> in a boring, sensible country like Germany. Regular rounds of royal city statusing look set to be with us for many jubilees to come. Yeah, they've got so if you want your town to become a city, just sit tight and wait, and rest assured that at this rate, every corner of the country will become a city by the year 3000. And the Everyone's a city. <laughs> Except Reading. <laughs> All right, final thoughts. All right, those guys are great. They're so funny. I haven't reacted and uh, commented on Mapman video for... Oh, probably well over a year, a year now, probably. And uh, but when I see kind of some of the popular ones pop up and especially if it's something like historically related and they, they do a lot of them, you know, because they're the map men. Right. But I like to get into those. But yeah, I, w I was honestly kind of interested because it, it, it come to me again, like last week I was doing my basically my first lesson on like early prehistory and, and but then like the transition um, Neolithic Revolution and like farming. Uh, getting into farming and sedentary societies and we were talking about the differences between between like a village town city city state and empire those were the terms we were going over and then necessarily have like great definitions so i was hoping to get a little bit more you know back in that but essentially what it is it just depends on where you live is is where you get those terms but i think for the most part people just kind of get the context of it just it's kind of you get larger and larger and larger but it'd be nice to have some more definitions to be able to work with uh, to make it better for teaching purposes, but I don't know, maybe it's not a big deal in the way or, or, or anyway. And they were just saying, basically, it's just a status thing anyway. So big whoop, right? All right.
Anyways, this is a lot of fun. If there are more of the Matman videos you guys would like to check out, let me know. Come over to the Discord server. Drop a link over in the video suggestions channel. It's the best way to do that. This original video link is down below. So if you haven't watched this one, make sure to support those guys. Give them the sub. I know they're popular, but every little bit helps. <clears throat> All right. Okay, and with that, we'll see you all next time. Bye.